The Fed repo crisis is still ongoing and doesn't seem to be letting up anytime soon. Most people globally have no idea what the repo market really entails. They don't understand it, they don't use it, they don't have any insight on it. That's the reality of this very opaque system that is extremely integral to global liquidity. Now the most prominent figure in the repo markets has written a report outlining what could be the most likely outcome the Fed would have to go from not QE4 to full-fledged QE4. QE4 before year end. This could get ugly. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at what's going on with the repo crisis. I've been covering this pretty much every single day since the issue began in September. I'm going to highlight some very, very important notes from this. We're looking at the most prominent figure within the repo markets. I'm going to show you all the details that you need to know, and then we're going to look at the economic factors that surround this, okay? Because the average average person and what they have to deal with on a daily basis is what it really comes down to. Because what goes on in the repo markets, whether they printed up 40 billion or 80 billion to the average person, doesn't really matter, right? But we're going to look at the actual stats that do. But you need to understand that these systems, despite the fact that you're, you're out of sight with these and you don't have anything to do with these on a daily basis, or perhaps even in your lifetime, it is all interconnected. And that's what's truly important. Let's begin by taking a look at this article out of CNBC. As I record this, we are now the day before the Fed releases their next statement. The December meeting is apparently where they are seemingly going to react to the current data. The current data says that everything is good, so they will not cut rates. At least that's what we see in various articles such as this. The Fed is expected to hold rates steady and vow to keep short-term lending markets stable. So basically, they're going to continue to intervene with the repo markets. And of course, they're not going to decrease interest rates. They already did three times this year. They'll say that that's enough. Then we have this article, the Fed will stay in hibernation until at least summer. That's according to a CNBC survey. Most people do not believe that they will increase the rates. They think that they're going to stay right around this range here. So of course, we will see what's going on. They do believe a majority, 61%, that the US and China are going to sign a limited trade agreement in the next three weeks. What's going to happen before December 15th? That's one of the other questions. I really want to know what's going on at this meeting. Of course, I will have a video for you. But until that point, we have some questions that need to be answered. Credit Suisse shocking call. Fed will launch QE4 before year end to stem the street cash crunch. Now you may have seen this already, but what I did was I looked at the actual report itself and I had a couple points that I wanted to make about it because you know you can look at what the CNBC articles say. They are always going to be just pulling out little points, but I want to give you the actual report itself. You can read it for yourself. In fact, if you do want to know what's going on with the repo market, then you have to read it, okay? If you really want to know. Otherwise, I'll try to just give you the best points from it. What we're looking at here is an individual named Zoltan Polzar, and I'm probably butchering his name, but this person works for Credit Suisse right now, previously worked with the New York Fed. So this is an individual that is right on the inside, knows exactly what's going on, and he is perhaps the top person to be explaining what's going on in the repo market. Now, he's not saying that what's going on is a bad thing. He's not against the banking system at all, not against the Federal Reserve at all. He's just explaining what he thinks is happening and how the Federal Reserve is going to react. So I want to make that very clear. He talks about the reserves that you've heard Jerome Powell mention many times before. Okay, we're going to do this thing in the repo markets, make sure that we get the reserves up to where they were before. However, he is stating specifically here that the reserves have been an issue issue and they have not been resolved at all with what the Fed has done. So-called QE4 would help rebuild bank reserves which have dropped as the Fed has shrunk its balance sheet. He gets into that more in the actual report itself. This is it right from Credit Suisse's own website. Remember, I always bring in the data from the source itself. This is dated December 9th, 2019. And he titled it, as you can see right here, Countdown to QE4. That's not me saying that. That's this individual. Now, he didn't reference the repo operation specifically as being QE4, though I do say that. Whether it's for bills, whether it's for coupons, whether this is short-term or long-term, to me, if they're intervening, 
meaning if their balance sheet is expanding, I'm calling a QE. But regardless, according to what he says, they're going in that direction, official QE4. I know this is small font, so I'm going to try to just move on quickly, but I need to get the entire thing in for you. The Fed's liquidity operations have not been sufficient to relax the constraints banks will face in the upcoming year end turn. I have talked about this many, many times throughout this period over the last few months. Year end is a huge issue for them. They've been oversubscribed on all of this. There is serious demand for all of the actions they're taking. And in fact, they're not doing enough, according to Zoltan. Reserves are still insufficient. There are no true excess reserves and the large US banks, global systemically important bank scores are shaping up to be severe binding constraint heading into the year end term. That right there is an issue, obviously. And then at the bottom, if we're right about funding stresses, the Fed will be doing QE4 right here by year end. The safe asset, US Treasuries, is funded by RV hedge funds on the margin. And if the FX swap market pulls balance sheet and funding away from them, the safe asset will go on sale. Treasury yields can spike into the year end and the Fed will shift from buying bills to buying what's on sale, coupons. So essentially, they'll be going from what they're doing right now, short term stuff to going to the long term stuff. Okay, so that's what QE really was back in one, two and three. And apparently this is going to short up the problems with reserves. Now, this is only one individual's opinion on the situation, but he's a prominent individual within this particular sector. Further along in the report, you can see what he wrote here. Truly excess reserves are thus gone, but dealers and banks loaded up on collateral as a trade, a trade they were supposed to be taken out of, eventually coupon purchases by the Fed, but the Fed never did that. And for the first time, we're heading into a year end turn without any excess reserves. So right in here, there's a lot of detail that he gets into further, much of an explanation as to what he thinks is going on all the details of that is here if i were to even get into a quarter of what's in this report the video would be a half an hour long most people wouldn't know what the hell to do with the information but for the purposes of the money gps i've covered enough links will be in the description as always but basically what we're looking at here is one very important person that is essentially finding all of the information we've been talking about all along and making sense of it so to me this right here is just absolutely key and it really shows that we've been paying attention and for good reason. Really quickly here out of this Bloomberg article, even as hedge funds and smaller broker dealers lean more heavily on the biggest US banks for borrowing in repo markets, the lenders' cash holdings have been declining, reducing their ability to jump in and relieve pressure when rates spike. Further down in the article, they wrote this, the Federal Reserve's efforts to calm the repo market after September's troubles may prove too minimal to prevent the repetition at the end of December when large European banks shrink repo lending to to minimize capital charges calculated annually. So of course, we're gonna just have to see what happens. There's no way to determine this, but I'm paying attention to it seven days a week. And of course, I will let you know if I see any changes and give you updates on what's happening. Treasury buildup, repo funding rises as buyers, including hedge funds, increase their purchases. This just shows you a breakdown, whether it's mutual funds, banks, and so on. You can take a look at that if you're interested. Jeffrey Gundlach says long-term rates headed higher as recession risks recede. So we can see that all of the data that has been adding up right here that he's been covering, some of these factors have definitely improved, such as the PMIs. When we're looking at the market PMIs, yes, they have improved a little bit. Still looking bad, actually, if you look at it. However, there is some improvement there. If you look at what's going on, which I'll show you in a minute with the ISM, that's clearly getting worse and worse. So we have some mixed sets of data and of course we need to be paying attention to all of it to understand what's really going on you're never going to get a whole picture by looking at a handful of stats it just never works that way 
I just wanted to point something out here. There was an interview with him on Yahoo Finance, and he mentioned this, which I really do think is so important to always mention whenever I see it. We are going to have to face Social Security, healthcare, all of these things, deficit-based spending. All of that is going to have to be resolved during the 2020s because the compounding curve is just so bad. Everything that they have priced in right now has been all of the rosy picture that they've painted for us. No recessions, no downturns returns are just going to be incredible for decades and of course that doesn't happen like that so what's going to occur with people's pension funds the next crash i mean they haven't even recovered after 10 years my goodness what's going to happen well you tell me U.S. diesel demand drops as manufacturers struggle, silver lining for ship owners. There's some detail here in this article out of Reuters. Essentially, what we're looking at is a report. You can click on the chart book, which will expand, and you will see all of the different charts that he has here related to this. I just wanted to show you two of those. U.S. Freight Transportation Services Index year over year, not looking good. There are many, many statistics that mirror this, of course. And essentially, what we had was 2018 all the way to the present things have been getting worse and worse and worse there's so many indicators that have shown this of course on the channel i've been keeping you up to date with all of that this is the ism i was talking about a few minutes ago u.s manufacturing and non-manufacturing indexes both of these has been declining for many many months in fact well over a year in these cases here so this is one of those stats that has been looking very bad as some of the others have turned up a bit so we'll see what the trend and takes us to but right now it's heading downward u.s productivity quarter over quarter is interesting actually because this is one that they have been pushing up for quite a while the last time we saw this was actually a few years ago so we'll see what's going on with this if it's an actual trend or does this turn around as uh, many expected too so we'll see now we flip the page over to china it's important to note with china's total social credit how much they've been pumping out there how much they've been loaning into the system with all the different methods that they have either with the people's bank of china or they're doing through their subsidiaries but i just wanted to note something very clear at least to me is that over the years there has been more and more and more credit pumped into this system we see the shadow banking being a huge problem in china as i've covered before the 32 trillion dollar secret you can look that up and essentially what we have here on every different level whether it's coming from stimulus and the government directly the public works projects or the quantitative easing like strategies that they have employed it has all resulted in this wacky system that we have today no issues have been resolved of course now we have the china cpi the consumer price index and the ppi the producer price index and you can see what has occurred over this period of time as we have seen with uh, pork prices and some other things the cpi has come up quite a bit but we have seen a decline in many of the economic factors and of course we've noted that with manufacturing and other stats as well this all ties in together China's historic car slump drags on as sales plunge in November. There's a chart, an article here for you. Just continuing on, wanted to make sure you're aware of this. China's passenger vehicle sales year over year change. This one has actually come up. As you can see, the trend is on the up. However, it is still in a contraction. So I wanted to make that very clear. China's auto sales, again, in the short term, this has come up, but the trend is still down over the past few years. Brazil is dealing with some heavy inflation. That's what this article is about. 12-month inflation is running at just 3.27%. Meat is rapidly becoming prohibitively expensive. The price of chicken rose 8%, pork 15%, and filet mignon 20%. Now, we know what's going on because of the pork issues and so on. They're talking about their involvement with China and so on. I get that. But essentially, how this affects real people is right in their wallet. That's pretty obvious to me. This is just a chart that is associated with that. So I wanted to bring you through all of this. I show you what's going on with the Federal Reserve, with the central banks, how they reduce interest rates, how they engage in all these policies. And all the while, what happens? What happens to you when you go to the store, when you go to the grocery store and you're going to buy things? Everything gets more expensive. When you go to put your kids through college, that's extremely expensive. Your health care is extremely expensive. All of this is because of what the central banks are 
doing. Not for any other reason. And people need to understand how this works, how the central banks were set up in the first place, and they would be so much more aware of what's happening. Well, that's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you hit the like button, you are supporting this channel. That's all you got to do. Hit one button. If you want to learn about passive income, if you want to learn about how to build a business, little to no money is required to start. This is one business model I think most people could benefit from. I don't charge anything for this course. It's 100% completely free. It's for my subscribers. It's available at the amazongps.com. If you're interested in learning about the financial system, if you want a way that is taught to you with no jargon, nothing to convolute the whole subject, these two books have everything you need. Once you read these two books, you're going to figure out all the details. You can ask the right questions. Check the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. Wait a second, don't go anywhere. This is really important. If you haven't seen this video, definitely watch it. Just click this and I will see you there.